Hey everybody, welcome back to Purple Finch Photography. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Matt. Today we're gonna to be unraveling the complex web of concerns regarding the recent federal ban of DJI drones as well as other Chinese marketed drones. Now, does this ban only affect the commercial drones such as the Mavic series, or does it go on to the recreational drones as well? Let's take a look as we discuss the ban's implications and the looming question whether recreational drone pilots and commercial pilots alike should be worried. Now, before we dive deeper into the video, I just wanna emphasize that a lot of what you're gonna hear in this video are my own personal opinions. Obviously, YouTube is a platform for diverse conversations, so if you have any perspectives that you'd like to share, please feel free to comment below. Whether you align with my viewpoint or not, I do value the community's insights. Now, with that out of the way, let's take a closer look at the legislative landscape that has set the stage for this unfolding drama. The National Defense Authorization Act of 2024, slated for President Biden's signature, harbors the American Security Drone Act of 2023. Senator Rick Scott, a key architect of this bill, has been shaping its contours for quite some time. The implications are quite clear. The bill bars the federal government and entities receiving funding from acquiring or utilizing Chinese-made UAVs. This, of course, extends to drone giants like DJI, heralding a potential grounding of these drones in critical sectors all over the country. Now, the question that's on everyone's mind is the magnitude that this impact will have on the drone community. DJI drones, having been instrumental to many people across the country, are now faced with grounding in areas that are vital to our nation. Government contractors, construction firms, agriculture, infrastructure maintenance, the list goes on. The potential economic fallout could be staggering, and the threat of livelihoods being jeopardized is more than just a hyperbole. DJI drones have woven themselves into the fabric of success stories for first responders, and this halt will seriously hamper the positive effects that these drones have on people's lives. Now, there are a few things I want to talk about surrounding the lobbying efforts of industry giants such as Skyo and DJI. Skyo, standing as America's largest drone manufacturer, albeit in the commercial sector, has faced allegations of lobbying to stifle competition. The goal? To seize control of commercial, industrial, and military markets. Skyo seems to be making the argument that DJI has not let the market be competitive enough, especially with their near at cost drones. DJI investing a significant $5.5 million over the past four years have also been actively engaging in lobbying efforts. It's a fierce competition for influence and understanding these dynamics is crucial for deciphering this legislative chessboard. The intricate dance between lawmakers and drone technology is an intriguing aspect of this narrative. The concern here is the potential lack of understanding among lawmakers about how drones actually operate. Obviously, a lot of these people have never flown a drone before, and is their decision-making solely based on information fed to them by others? Now, another thing that also ties into this is the controversy surrounding DJI's alleged ties to the Chinese government. And there are also unproven claims that America's data is being collected through the use of these drones. The assertion that DJI, a prominent Chinese drone manufacturer, has connections with the Chinese government has been a recurring concern, but these allegations lack conclusive evidence available to the public. Lawmakers responsible for creating and passing legislation are now faced with decisions that impact national security. However, the foundations of these decisions appears to be influenced by the speculation and fear rather than concrete proof. Now let's delve into the personal connections between the government and major American drone companies. This reveals a prominent figure, Brendan Groves. As the Vice President of Regulatory and Policy Affairs at Skyo, Groves brings not only a military background, but also extensive experience from his tenure within the federal government, including roles at the Department of Justice and the FAA Executive Committee. This unique skill set positions him as a central figure shaping the regulatory environment making a lasting impact on drone policies in the United States. Now, having explored that broader landscape, let's zoom in on the concerns surrounding consumer drones. The specter of potential bans on consumer favorites like DJI and Autel is causing a ripple of worry. Autel being a Chinese-made drone isn't exempt from the ban. However, the likelihood of a nationwide ban on DJI or Autel consumer drones appears to be pretty low. And my firm stance on this matter is influenced by several key factors. Firstly, the exit of Skyo from the consumer market represents a significant shift in the competitive landscape. With Skyo no longer posing a direct threat, 
the dynamics within the drone industry have changed drastically. Skyeo's decision to focus solely on the commercial sector removes a major player from the consumer drone market, reducing the perceived competitive intensity. This strategic shift diminishes concern among regulators about market dominance and potential risks associated with concentrated power. In essence, the altered competitive landscape marked by Skyeo's strategic pivot contributes to my conviction that a broad ban on DJI or Autel consumer drones is pretty unlikely. However, we aren't out of the woods yet legislative challenges loom large. Several states are grappling with poorly written anti-drone laws, often unaware of the federal preemption. Now this is where our proactive engagement becomes indispensable. Advocacy sharing facts with state representatives and dispelling misinformation are pivotal to shaping informed laws at the state level. Many anti-drone laws are driven by privacy and nuisance concerns. State lawmakers may be influenced by a general sentiment of protecting citizens' privacy without fully grasping the broader implications or the existing federal regulations governing drone use. Engaging with these representatives helps ensure the legislation is effective, balanced, and considers the interests of the general public. Well-informed laws can strike a better balance between protecting privacy and enabling the responsible use of drones. Now, to deepen your insights further, I highly recommend watching Billy Kyle's interview with Adam Welsh, the head of global policy for DJI. The conversation provides invaluable insights and is bound to spark contemplation about the recent legislation. The link is in the description and I suggest starting around the 34 minute mark just for the heart of the matter. So as we navigate this intricate terrain, it's clear that the ban on Chinese made drones raises multifaceted concerns. Balancing our national security with the contributions DJI drones make to American life underscores the need for a nuanced approach. Share your thoughts in the comments, hit the like button, and if you found this exploration valuable, subscribe for ongoing updates. Until next time, fly safe, fly smart, and stay tuned for more insights.